the Mutual Broadcasting System, in cooperation with Family Theater Incorporated, presents Altar of Freedom, starring Anne Revere. Your host, Roddy McDowell. <laughs> More things are wrought by prayer than this world dreams of. Here, transcribed, is Roddy McDowell. Not so long ago, Family Theater received a letter which seems to call for a special answer. A listener wrote, I like your program, the plays, the stars, the music, but I never know what to expect. Why, one week you present a delightful comedy, and next week you're very serious. I don't know what to look for next. Well, I'll tell you what to expect on the family theater. First, a program that is interesting, entertaining, and usually, we hope, inspiring. Then, a weekly reminder that your family is the most important thing you have in the world. Something to cherish and protect. Something to thank God for each day by praying to Him as a family. Family Theatre is dedicated to your family and to all the families of the world. Family Theatre is successful if your family enjoys it each week and becomes personally convinced that the family that prays together stays together. Roddy McDowell returns following this week's Family Theatre presentation, Altar of Freedom, starring Anne Revere. <laughs> William Schooler, that's my name, the Adjutant General of Massachusetts. And with a war going on, one of my duties is reporting to the governor about the casualty lists that come to me every morning from the War Department. You know, if it was up to me, there'd never be any more wars. I hate the useless slaughter, the wanton destruction of property, the hardships and heartbreaks that are caused by war. But it's not up to me. My job, as I said, is checking the casualty lists and talking with callers like... Mrs. Bixby. General Schooler, the man outside said I should come in. Oh, why don't you sit down? You're, uh... Mrs. Bixby. Lydia Bixby. Address? 15 Dover Street here in Boston. Husband's occupation? I'm a widow. I see. Any children? Five. Oh, five. Quite a family, Mrs. Bixby. Yes, five boys. Five wonderful boys. And that's what's so terrible. They want to go in the army. They're all... Well, three of them are, and you see that only leaves two, and before long... And they mustn't. They mustn't, do you understand? Oh, please, Mrs. Bixby, don't get nervous. But you'll have to start at the beginning if you want me to help you. I'm sorry, I am mixed up. I'll, I'll try to be a little clearer. As I said, I have five boys. Charles, Henry, Oliver, Edward, George. And they're all... Mother know about it, George? How could she? Henry didn't give it away. Oh, of course he didn't. It's a surprise. All right, boys, if you want dinner, you'd better finish setting the table. Oh, yeah, Mother. We're almost done. I can't understand what's keeping Charles. He's always home before this, and dinner's ready now. Oh, he'll be here any minute, I bet. Oh, yeah. <laughs> sure he will. If he's very late, I can warm things over for him. Well, Oliver? Oh, oh, yes, Mother. Bless us, O Lord, for these, I guess, which we are about to receive in thy body. Amen. George, start the potatoes. Pass the bread around, Henry. Oh, there's Charles now. Hurry up, son. Dinner's on the table. Be right there, Mother. I wonder what Mother will say. Yeah, me too. Sorry I'm late, Mother. Well, how do I look? Look? Why, Charles. Charles, that uniform. You're in the Army. You're going to war. That's right. I enlisted this morning. But, Charles, why? You you didn't have to, not yet. Any. Oh, <laughs> you're, you're only playing a joke, that's it. It's, it's a joke. You didn't have to volunteer. The war isn't that serious. It's no joke, Mother. I'm really in the army. Gee, you look swell, Charlie. I wish I was old enough. It's, it's such a shock, Charles. I can't believe... I can't think that you'd want to go into the army to be a soldier. Charles, Charles, why did you do it? Well, Henry and I talked it over, Mother, and we knew with this war starting and things being like they are, well, one of us would have to go sooner or later, so we tossed a coin and I won. Yeah, you were lucky. Oh, it doesn't seem right, Charles. You're not old enough to, to go to war, to fight. Well, I'm nearly 23, Mother. Of course, I, I know mothers never look on their children as grown-up. 
Certainly never grown up enough to, to kill people in a battle. But they need more men. That's what everyone says, Mother. The war won't last very long. You wait and see. I'll be back real soon. How long before you have to leave, Charles? Well, then, let's see. Exactly two hours. I'm to report tonight at 8.30. What? So soon? Oh, my goodness. Why, you'll have to pack. Only two hours. Oh, there's so much to say and no time. Oh, sit down, Charles. You haven't had anything to eat. It might be a long time before you get another home-cooked meal. Only two hours more. Where are they going to send you, Charlie? Well, I don't know, Ollie. Doesn't matter much, I guess. The point is, I'm representing the Bixby family in this war, and... Well, you fellas have to pitch in and help Mother. That's your job now. Mine's fighting. Don't worry about us, son. We'll get along all right. I guess you know you're the first Bixby ever to wear a uniform. I hope you're the last one. First it's Charles, and now you, Henry. I know, but... Ma- it's only been three months since Charles left. I was just beginning to recover from that shock. But, Mother, I... Of course, Henry, I know I'm only your mother, but you might have talked to me about it first before you enlisted. Well, I knew what you'd say. You'd have tried to have talked me out of it, and I'd made up my mind. I'm old enough, and... Well, I know how desperately the Army needs manpower. Oh, but why not let someone else volunteer? One Bixby in the Army. That's all that's expected of us, Henry. Please, Mother, it... Well, it was something I felt I had to do. I felt I owed it to my country. Anyhow, with with both Charlie and me in it, it can't last very much longer. Well, I wish you'd talked it over with me first, son, but... Well, it's too late for that now, I guess. Yeah, I... I guess. Mother! Oh, Mother, I got that job I was telling you... Mother, what's wrong? You've been crying, is it? It's it's the conscription. It's Edward. He has to go to war, too. I just found out. Ed does? I've already sent two of my boys. Isn't that enough to expect from one mother? Isn't it? Isn't it? Why do they have to make Edward go, too? He doesn't want to. They don't need him. He's only a baby. I don't know, Mother. The way the war's going... Well, as soon as I'm old enough, I'll be going... No, not you too, Oliver. Please, promise me you won't. You can't. Oh, why would you do that to me? Oh, don't you see, Mother? I wouldn't be doing anything to you. I'd be doing something for you. I'll be fighting for you. And that's why I've come to you, General Schooler. You've got to help me. What is it you want me to do? You've got to keep Oliver out of the army. And George, too. Just as soon as he can, George will want to follow his brothers. It's it's inevitable. Yes, I'm afraid it is. That's how boys are. But that's... You've got to stop it, do you hear? You've got to stop it. Mrs. Bixby, I'm afraid it's unavoidable unless... Unless what? Well, unless the war ends before your last two are old enough to enlist. Oh, do you think it will? Tell me honestly. Do you think it will end soon? I hope it doesn't end just yet, Mrs. Bixby. Right now, we're not doing well at all. If it ended suddenly, we would be the losers. And we can't lose, Mrs. Bixby. We're fighting for a just cause for the safety and preservation of our nation. We've got to win this war. I want my boys back. All of them. Winning or losing doesn't matter to me. You can't mean that, Mrs. Bixby. For the sake of your boys' futures, for the sake of our country. You can't afford to lose. You've got to believe that. But if I don't... Then you're not the mother I'm sure they think you are. Hey! Yeah? Ain't your name Bigsby, buddy? That's right. Come on over here. You might know this fellow I'm working on. His name's Bigsby, too. What? Where is he? Let me see him. Hey, now, hey, now. Take it easy. He ain't hurt bad. George. Oh, it's George. George, it's me, Ollie. You know him, huh? Yes, he's my brother. Are you all right, George? Oh, Ollie. Oh, gee, I'm glad to see you. What's wrong? Are you hurt much? I got a bullet in my leg. Lost some blood, I guess. I'm all right. Have you seen any of the others? Henry or Charlie or Ed? I... No. Henry and Charlie are... They... They were... Yeah? 
They're gone, George. Killed? They are? Yeah. Oh, gee, Ollie. Oh, no. No. Got a letter from Mother. You want to read it? It just came yesterday. Henry I... and Charlie. Both gone. Oh, gee. Huh? That's war, George. You gotta expect it, I guess. But it's awful tough on Mother. No news about Ed. No. I haven't heard a thing. I can't get over it. Henry. Charlie. I guess I never thought of war being like this. Oh, look, Ollie. Can you stay with me for a while? I'd sort of like to talk. Oh, we... no, George. I wish I could, but my outfit's moving on after we oh, eat, I, and I... I... I just hope. Well, I'll see you later, huh? Yeah. Later. Somewhere. I don't like this war business, Ollie. I don't either. And neither does Mother. <laughs> I can take this to the governor, please. Yes, sir. And while you're there... General Schooler. Yes? Oh, Mrs. Bixby. I didn't expect to see you today. Come into my office. Won't you sit down? No. I'll stand. General Schooler, how can you sleep at night, knowing in the morning you'll face another long list of boys killed, serving the country they've been taught to love and respect, I should think you'd walk the floor from dusk to dawn. Mrs. Bixby, I'm sure You know that what's you... happened to my family, don't you? Yes, I know. Charles and Henry, well, they volunteered. It was their own choice. They were old enough to realize the dangers they faced. But Edward, Edward was taken against his will. He didn't want to go to war. And now even he's, he's dead. Conscription plays no favorites, Mrs. There's Bixby. no one left at home, General Schooler. Oliver and George are both away now, fighting. They're all I have left in this world. And I demand that you send my two boys home. No one can be asked to do more for his country than I've done. I agree with you, Mrs. Bixby. Still, there isn't a thing I can do but hope and pray your boys will be spared. I have a son of my own in this war now, too. Your son. One son. I've sent five sons to war. My entire family... And now there are only two of them left. Mrs. Bixby, I don't sleep very much at night, and I do walk the floor just as you said. I'm afraid to read the casualty list in the morning, afraid of what I might find there. Yes, I'm a soldier, but I am against war, against what it does to families like yours and mine. <laughs> this is the place, Hawkins. Bring the box and come along with me. Yes, sir. That box is too heavy. You can put it on the porch. It's all right, sir. Good morning, Mrs. Bixby. By General Schooler. Not General, Mrs. Bixby. This morning, I'm just plain William Schooler, private citizen. Well, I, I'll get right to the point. I know all about the hardships you're facing. I know you're having trouble making ends meet. And yes, you know this? I do, and I, I've taken the liberty of talking about it with some members of my church, and we've... Well, we've collected a box of staples for you, flour, sugar, some meat and what? vegetables. And, and we also have a small present of some money that... Uh... General Schooler, I've never been insulted like this before in my life. Did my visits to you imply that I was asking for charity? Now, wait, Mrs. Do you Bixby. think I can't see through this miserable scheme of yours, trying to trade a few pounds of flour and sugar for the lives of my three sons? Mrs. Bixby, stop it. Now, don't be a fool. I'm only a widow. There's nothing I can do about it. Uh, Mrs. Bixby... You're so upset, so emotionally disturbed, you don't realize what you owe the two boys who are still away to war fighting for you. I know how little food you have been able to buy. I know that you're nearly starving because you don't get enough to eat. If you go on this way, there'll be no mother left to welcome those two boys home. Have you thought of that? No. No, I never looked at it like that. Isn't it difficult enough for them as it is without having the additional worry of their mother's health in their minds? This food isn't meant to be charity, Mrs. Bixby. It's, uh, it's medicine. You need to take it. Yes, I do need it, General Schooler. Thank you. And I'm 
I'm sorry for the things I said. Oh, Mrs. Bixby, there, there are times when I'm quite deaf. You know, I haven't heard a single word you've said since I came here. Goodbye, and let's hope for the best. Watch out, that's my bum leg. Sure, I know it. Oh. Want to see how it's doing? Oh. Hey, say, you're the fella, aren't you, who fixed it up yesterday? Yep. Hey, it's doing all right, too. You'll be up and around another two or three weeks. Wait, you remember my brother? The fellow was talking to me while you were working on me yesterday. Brother? Uh, oh, yeah, sure. He said his outfit was moving on after they ate. Gee, I wish he was still here. I'd like to talk some more. Yeah... Sure, I guess that bunch did plan on moving up last night. Plans were changed at the last minute, though. They sent out a scouting party to look things over. Your brother was one of the volunteers. Yeah? And he got captured? Nope. Killed. I came to your house as soon as I read the casualty list this morning, Mrs. Bixby. I'm... Well, what... What can I say? Thank you, General Schooler. There's nothing either of us can say, I guess. Poor, poor George. Now, all of them. Five wonderful boys, General Schooler. Gone. My entire family. Wiped out. I, uh, I had a double purpose in coming here this morning, Mrs. Bixby. I, I had to talk to someone, someone who'd understand... I know you will. You see, that same casualty list, it, it included the name of my boy, too. Oh. Oh, I'm so sorry for you. And your poor wife must feel... Uh, no, Mrs. Bixby, there's no one to feel anything but me. There were just the two of us, my son and I. Oh. Then... And you lost your entire family, too. Just as I did. Thank you, Mrs. Bixby. Thank you for putting it that way. The governor will see you, General Schooler. Go right in. Thank you, Wilson. Oh, come in, Schooler. Yeah. Terrible about your son, terrible. My sympathy uh, goes out to you. Thank you, sir, but that's not what I wanted to see you about. Oh? Uh -huh. You've heard me speak of a Mrs. Bixby, had five boys in the service. Uh, last I heard, she'd lost two or three of them, hadn't she? How's the poor woman bearing up? She's lost all five, Governor. Word just came through this morning. No. Why, that's... That's a national tragedy, Schooler. Five boys from one family, it's... What can we do about it? I thought maybe you might uh, ask that same question of the War Department... We can't overlook this woman's great sacrifice, Governor. Oh, certainly not. I'll get to the department right away, Scholar. Make sure of the facts first, and then see if, they, if there are any suggestions. Come in. Oh, come in. Come in, Mrs. Bixby. I got here as soon as I could, General. I'd have come to your house, but I... You're busy, I know. You look weary. Oh, not a bit of it. I'm fine. The war's finally going our way. I guess our sons will be remembered as, as winners, after all. I couldn't feel any prouder of them, regardless of the outcome, General Schooler. I know. I... It's just... Well, you know and I know how they fought and died for their country. But does their country know or care? Mrs. Bixby, the reason I asked you to come here, I... I received a letter sent through the War Department. It's, it's addressed to you, and, well, I think it answers that question. A letter from the War Department? Open it. Read it, Mrs. Bixby. I'm going out for a while, so make yourself at home here in my office. No one will bother you. I wonder... Oh. Mrs. Bixby, Boston, Massachusetts... Dear Madam, I have been shown in the files of the War Department a statement of the Adjutant General of Massachusetts that you are the mother of five sons who have died gloriously 
on the field of battle. I feel how weak and fruitless must be any words of mine which should attempt to beguile you from the grief of a loss so overwhelming. But I cannot refrain from tendering to you the consolation that may be found in the thanks of the Republic they died to save. I pray that our Heavenly Father may assuage the anguish of your bereavement and leave you only the cherished memory of the loved and lost and the solemn pride that must be yours to have laid so costly a sacrifice upon the altar of freedom. Yours very sincerely and respectfully, Abraham Lincoln. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Lincoln, for knowing and for caring. This is Roddy McDowell again. From the story, Altar of Freedom, there comes more than the mention of Abraham Lincoln, because his name stands for the things we love most in our American life. He believed in God and in mankind, in the lessons of the past and in the hopes of the future, in the need of sacrifice and in the value of prayer. And from his courage and difficulties, there comes new hope for our own generation, a hope that the foundation of our way of life, the American home, will stay together in peace and unity, for a house divided against itself cannot stand. Where there is disunity, there is no peace. And without God, without the help of prayer, real unity cannot exist in our nation or in our homes. That is why family prayer should be a daily practice in all homes, because the family that prays together stays together. Thank you for being with us, and God bless you. Our grateful thanks to Anne Lefeer and Roddy McDowell for their appearances, and to Jack Price for writing our play. Original music was scored and conducted by Max Tear. This production of Family Theatre Incorporated was directed by David Young. Brief portions were transcribed. The supporting cast included Paul McVeigh, Jack Lewis, Glenn Denning, Peter Rankin, Roland Morris, Clark Gordon, and Ralph Moody. Next week, our family theater stars will be Dennis O'Keefe and Donna Reed in God and the Red Scooter, Family Theater's third anniversary broadcast. Your host will be Spencer Tracy. This series of the Family Theater broadcasts is made possible by the thousands of you who felt the need for this kind of program and by the mutual broadcasting system which has responded to this need. Be with us next week at the same time when Spencer Tracy, Donna Reed, and Dennis O'Keefe will star on Family Theater. Your announcer, Merrill Ross. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System.